Good morning and happy Sabbath, brethren. Good morning, brothers. Good morning. Good morning. I hope that you are all doing well, especially this day. It's a special day of rest, for this is the Holy Sabbath day. And I hope that as we study God's Word through this lesson of the week, we will be prepared in hearing the message of our Lord and Savior. And before we start with that, we would like to kindly introduce ourselves, starting with me. I am Brother Jovit Dolores. And I am Cedric A. Badenas. And I am Brother Stephen J. Pinkas. I am Brother Gospel Rabino. And I am Brother Free Vanessa Salcedo. And we are all theology students of the Adventist University of the Philippines. And we will now be starting with our Sabbath school lesson entitled, Wisdom for Righteous Living. And before we start, can Brother Gospel lead us with our opening prayer? Okay, shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Our dear and loving Heavenly God, we thank you for the, this opportunity that you have given unto us. I pray, dear Lord, that you will grant us wisdom. I pray, dear God, that you would send your Holy Spirit to be with us so that we may be able to present properly and clearly thy word. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so, let's start with our key text. Can I request Brother Ced Cedric to read our key text of this lesson? So, our catechs, this uh, lesson was found on the book of Psalms, 90 verse 12. It says here, So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Wow! So, our lesson centers on the topic, wisdom. Brother Stephen, when I ask the question, what is wisdom to you? Thank you so much, Brother uh, Jobet, for that wonderful question. By the way, uh, brethren, one of the things that amazes me about our lesson discussion for this week is that it emphasizes the importance of wisdom in order for us to have a righteous living. Now, you may ask, how should we have a wisdom? The K-text of our lesson study for this week, my dear brothers and sisters, answered that question. It is found in the book of Psalms 90 verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Now, maybe some of our brethren, Brother Jobet, would ask, how should we count the numbers of our days since we do not know how? My dear brothers and sisters, it does not mean that we should count our age or our years in this, in this world. What does it mean is we should always remember that our life in this world is just very short. That's why we should live it in the faithfulness of God. And beside, and aside from that, in order for us to live it uh, faithfully in the presence of God, we should learn how to have a wisdom. But the Bible says, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, emphasizes to us that wisdom does not come from below, but it, it is comes from above. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs 2 verse 6, for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Meaning to say, my dear brothers and sisters, and also to our brothers here in front, in order for us to have a wisdom, we should come to Christ. We should come to God. Now the question again, how should we come to God? The Bible says in James 1 verse 5, If any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. How should we ask to God? We should come to Him by prayer and studying His Word. Because Brother Jobet, the Bible says, Jesus says, Search the Scripture because in them that 
is the one who testifies of me. And through the scriptures also, my dear brothers and sisters, we may learn the importance of studying God's law and also the word of God. That's why in our uh, lesson study for this week, we may able to learn before the time of David the importance of studying the Word of God. And that is the most uh, basic information or reference in order for us to have a wisdom for righteous living. Amen. Thank you so much for that wonderful emphasis on our introduction to the lesson. So when here, we can see that the Word of the Lord is very much important in our life. For in it, if we search the scripture, the life of Christ, it all points us, it all points us to our Savior. And with that, I would uh, like to ask Brother Gospel, what have you learned from the lesson? Well, personally, Brother Jovit, I've learned a lot in our lesson for this week, especially in one particular point that I've learned is that the fear of of the Lord. So what is this fear of the Lord that is talking us about? This fear is all about the wisdom of God. And if you have our Bibles, I would like to invite everyone that let us read in the book of Psalms 111 verse 10. It says here, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding his praise endures forever. And also one more verse that I can rely that to is on Psalms 112 verse 1. It says here, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. Now, what I've learned from reading the text is, is that when you fear God, it does not say that you are actually scared of God, but Rather, it is saying to us that we should respect God, give honor and glory to our God. And also, when we fear God, when we give respect to God, we also delight in His law that He has given unto us. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Gaspel, for one of the key points of our lesson. So we have heard that the commandments of the Lord is also important. Can I ask, Brother Priv, why is the commandment or the law important to us? Uh, for me, the importance of the law in our lives, the law is not a burden for us. It is a character of God. It's a gift that we must value His law. While we obeying His law, He will bless us. But if we do not obey His law, he will curse us. So we must obey him because he says in the Bible, if you love me, keep my commandments. Thank you so much, Brother Freib, in which we would know that by keeping the law, you would show your love to God. You don't keep the law to be saved. You keep the law because you are saved and you just want to show your love and respect to the Lord. So, with that, this points us to the point in which whenever we are with God, it doesn't mean that we will not face temptation. So, whenever we face hardship in our life, this is a test which makes us stronger. So, whenever problem arises, we should do one of the most crucial things. And Brother Cedric will give us an explanation to this question. Okay, thank you so much, Brother Jovet, for your uh, explanations about our lesson. So in my part here, in our lessons, I discuss the, the Lord test to His people. So as Brother Jovet says that even we are we're facing some uh, beautiful things in our life, we are... Uh, sleeping in a bed of roses, just as they said. But there, we, have, we are no exemption for the trials and temptations in our life. And especially, particularly here in the Bible, or we would read here in the Bible, if you have a Bible with you, kindly open on Psalms 81, verses 
uh, verse 9, uh, verse 8, sorry, it says here, Hear, O my people, sorry, it's verse 7, You called in trouble, and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Mereba. So you would see here that God has their testing here in the waters of Mereba. So what is this Mereba, friends, means? So according to our lesson, Mereba is the place where Israel tested God by challenging His faithfulness and power to provide for His needs. So brothers and sisters in Christ, there are two reference of Meribah here conveys in the lesson. So the number one is God's people must not repeat the mistake of this past generations. So the Meribah has defined that the mistakes of the past generations would not be repeat again. So instead, they are to trust God and to walk in His way. So that's the number one here. So the second is, although the people failed the test, God came to their rescue when they were in the trouble. God's saving grace in the past gave us an assurance of God's grace to the new generations. Of what really emphasized here, despite of the trials, the tests and temptations that the people of God experience, here comes the trust here. So the word tested here in the Hebrew is charap. Charap. It not means delicious, friends. It's tested. Okay? In verse 9, it conveys the sense of purifying, okay? Refining and purging. Thus, the goal of God testing of Joseph's faith was to remove any doubt in God's promise and to strengthen Joseph's trust in God's guidance. So, the particular story here is in the Joseph life where God has tested him, but despite of the tested that Joseph experienced, is God removed all the doubts in the Joseph heart, which he holds in the promise of God and strengthened the trust of Joseph. So, just like us today, friends, God is working in our life. Even we are, uh, even we are experiencing temptation or tested in our life because they are saying God that in every test there are the testimony so that's my part here in our lesson study that uh, God's tested strengthen us if we continue obey him and if we continue to trust in him with all our hearts and with all our minds okay thank you so much brother Cedric so, all of us have given our thoughts from the question, what did you learn? So, to summarize all of these things, we can know that we can learn from the lesson that the law is important. The importance of the law, that by keeping the law, you give respect to the Creator. And when you give respect to the Creator, you fear Him. Not that you are scared of Him, but because you want to obey Him. The fear of the Lord means obedience to the Lord. And then, to the point that we are tested for us to not get shattered in our faith, for, to not make us scared, to not make us doubtful, but we are tested so that we might become stronger each day with our faith. And to... And the point on this, let's open our Bibles in Psalms 141. So, prayer for safekeeping from wickedness. For we all know that whenever we do something, we should always remember this very basic thing. The Lord is with us. And let, let us read. Psalm 141, verse 4, it states here, Do not incline my heart to any evil thing. Practice wicked works which with men who work iniquity and do not let me eat of their delicacies. Basically, 
you are praying that, Lord, I am keeping your word. I want to obey you. I want to trust you with trials in my life. This is my prayer right now. Please don't let me be the same with those wicked people. Please, my Lord, do not make me get tempted in the flesh. Make me stronger upon your word. And in verse 5, it tells us, Let the righteous strike me, and it shall be a kindness. And let him rebuke me, it shall be as excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it. In which it points us, God wants to rebuke us. We are asking for advice to the Lord so that we will get refined. And the last verse in verse 8, But my eyes are upon you, O God, the Lord, in you I take refuge. Do not leave my soul destitute. My eyes are yours, O Lord. I, my eyes, means loyalty. My loyalty is to you, my Lord, which points us that when an individual pray to God in Psalms 141, this helps the individual from deviating or turning away from God. That is the righteous way of praying for wisdom. So, let's now go into the second part, the second question of our lesson. How does it make an impact to our lives? With this, let me ask Brother Stephen to give an insight on this question. Thank you so much again, Brother Jobeth, for that uh, wonderful question. So, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and also to our followers in social media, I just want to share my uh, understanding about the impact of this lesson study in my own and personal perspectives based on our discussion is that knowing that God is the only one that can give us wisdom in order for us to have a righteous life or to have a righteous living, I may decide to surrender my life to Him. Because I know, and we know, my dear brothers and sisters, that without God, we can do nothing. And He is the only one that can give us a righteous life and righteous uh, living through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Because, my dear friends, and also Brother Jobet, I just want to share one of the learnings that I have learned during our class in uh, ethics subject. The teacher told us, how can you define a wise person? Our professor, my dear brothers and sisters, says that a wise person is the one who knows what is right and what is wrong but chooses to do the right one. And also in our lesson study, my dear brothers and sisters, we already know that the God that we are serving, He is the right that we should follow. He is the right one. He is the only one that can give us the righteous life that we might have in order for us to be with Him someday in heaven. So that's why maybe, maybe some of you also are struggling with your life. Don't forget, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And in order for us to know more about Christ and to imitate the example that He had set before us, we should learn in His law, follow His law, learn about Him every day by studying our, uh, His Word because the Word of the Lord is our foundation, is the foundation of our faith, and also this is the one who can give us wisdom because this is our guide as we continue our journey. Thank you and God bless. Thank you so much, Brother Stephen, for that wonderful insights. Now let me ask Brother Freib, how would you apply the learnings that we have into our life? Uh, thank you for that uh, question, Brother Jovit. Uh, if uh, we rely on ourselves, we fall and fall again. But if, we trust, but if we trust in the power of God, He will always ready to help us to give 
a courage to overcome all the temptation of Satan. As we child of God, He did not give a commandment to us to be a burden for us. It is a guide for us to enlighten us on how His character revealed to us by His law. It means He wants us to be saved. That is His character to us, revealing by the law. His law pointing out to Him only. So, King David know that he is weak. He go to God by prayers. He said, Lord, clean my heart. Change me, O Lord. Because King David is a sinful man. He sinned many times, but the love of God is always ready to rescue him from the depth of sin. Thank you so much, Brother Frib. Now let me ask Brother Gaspel, how did the lesson made an impact in your life? Uh, thank you for that question, Brother Jovit. Personally, in my life, uh, the impact of the lesson for this week really taught me that in order for us to gain wisdom, in order for us to have wisdom in our lives, is we must first know who is the author and where is wisdom coming from? And that is in the knowledge of understanding the character of Christ. Because when we understand the character of God, it, sim it simply turns out one by one that we are able to understand what the law of God is trying to tell us. And eventually, it will help us also to live a righteous life that is founded only upon the Word of God and also in the character of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Brother Gaspel. And so, the last person I would ask the question, how would you apply the principles of the lesson that we have learned into your life, Brother Cedric? Okay. Thank you again, Brother Jobeth, for questioning me about our lesson this Sabbath day. So, for me, it is really impactful in my life, our lesson, because it is about God's test to me. So personally, I've encountered many temptations and trials, I would say, and God's test in my life. So I would say earlier that in every test, there are testimony. One of my testimony, because I am a working student, so I have struggled financially. Just like sometimes I have nothing in my pocket or wallet, but God is really, is really powerful. God's graciousness is revealed in my life. Because in our lesson, uh, the God allows times of testing to, his, to let His children faithfulness revealed in His life. So God allowed uh, tests in our life to reveal of how we are very faithful to Him or what is the situations of our faith, faithfulness to Him. So the question for us this morning is, what is Meriba in your life? So what is the place of, uh, what is the conditions of your, your, fret, your faithfulness to our, uh, to our Lord, Jesus Christ? So I'd just like to read here in our lesson that God requires prompt and unquestioning obedience of His law, but men are asleep or paralyzed by the deception of Satan. It is uh, from, from the Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 146. So it's really uh, wonderful here. So it says that this obedience not only hardens the heart and conscience of the guilty one, but it tends to corrupt the faith of others. If I were in that situation, brothers and sisters in Christ, if I would not disobey, I would not uh, obey God, instead disobeying Him, it will corrupt my faith in God. And I would not like, I would not like to uh, experience that in myself. I would like to build trust in Jesus. I would like to build an complete obedience to Him because God is my Savior. God is uh, amazing in my life. So that's all, Brother Jobeth, and thank you so much. Thank you, Brother Cedric. So we have heard 
wonderful testimonies on how the lesson have impacted us. And you might also question, like you would be asking, why is Brother Jovit also not answering the question? For me, how it impacted my life is what we can read from the book of Psalms, verse 1. Chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. So let us read the book of Psalms, chapter 1. Let's start at verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he med meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not weather, and whatever he does shall prosper. The impact it made into my life is the very moment you give your life towards God. Everything that you do, you always seek God first. You know what happens? Your life will prosper. Whenever temptation arises, you would just pray, Lord, please help me overcome. That is the moment of having wisdom, seeking God. And what did the Psalm chapter 1 tell us? You will not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. And also, your delight is in the law. If God is important in your life, you obey God and you also obey his commandments. And with this, everything you do in life, you prosper. You have this time in your life in which you don't know what to do. Exams are coming up, finances are piling up, and then as if life had given up on you. But remember, the one above did not give up on you. He even gave himself went down to this earth and saved you. That is how he loved you. And by understanding that, that is the start of having wisdom. And that is the start of loving God. And so, with this, my dear friends, we would realize that all of this points us to the Creator. Wisdom did not come from ourselves. You know, do not boast that you have talent. Do not boast that you are smart, that, ah, I have this kind of grade because I am smart. Don't be too trusting on yourself because that intelligence that you have came from God. It was His will that you become smart. It was, your, it was His will that you will be blessed in riches. Do not boast it that you did it yourself. So, to sum it all up, my dear friends, we have been blessed by hearing the message from our beloved future pastors. And we've realized that sometimes in our life, we would be tested, but still God uses this to make us stronger. And sometimes, we would even forget that there is still someone who will be with you even in times of trouble. God is always with you. And whenever you feel so down in your life, kneel in prayer and God will give you wisdom how to overcome the challenge in your life that you're facing. And above all things, you should always keep in your heart the same way David prayed. Your word, O oh Lord, I have put in my heart that I may not be tempted to sin against you. The law should always be a big part of our life because this, the scripture, all points us to the wonderful creator of this vast universe. So I hope and I pray, my dear brothers and sisters, wherever you are right now, which part of the world you are watching this, God 
is watching over you. God will continue to bless you. All you just need to do is understand that He is the one who gave you everything. And glory and honor and praise should go back to His holy name. This is our prayer. May God bless us all. So shall we have our closing prayer to be led by Brother Fib? Let us pray. Our eternal loving God, we praise you indeed for the message that you give for all of us. The importance of wisdom, the importance of being obeyed in your law. It is a gift of love coming from you. It's not a burden. In fact, it is a blessing for you. Help us and direct our way to you and lead us in the way that you want to us. And Lord, thank you for this message that you've given to all of us, that we are weak and sinner, but because of your love and grace for all of us, it is sufficient for us to obey your will for us. If you, we love you, we must obey your will because this is your want for all of us. Thank you, eternal loving God, for all the message that you give for all of us. Help us to apply in our daily lives that we may not sin against you. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.